Alright, so here's where we were when we left off. Uh, we have our game here, and if we make a match, we get the pieces gray out, and then new pieces slide in, the columns collapse. Uh, there is a problem though, a couple issues. First of all, sometimes uh, when you get a match of just two, it'll detect it as a match of three. Uh, it might do it right here, because if I move this piece down, uh, it might register this piece is in both this place and that place at the same time, and then make a match with the one beneath it. It didn't that time, but some of you have, have noticed issues where matches of two sometimes occur. Um, we're going to fix that with how we're going to change the way that we do matches in the next unit. Um, but today, the issue that we're going to fix is if I swap two pieces here, I can still make swaps on the board, uh, even though I shouldn't be able to until everything becomes stable. So we're going to fix this by creating something called a state machine. Uh, a state machine, and there's a bunch of different ways that we can program it. I'm going to show you guys the way that I learned, uh, which isn't necessarily the best way to do it, but it's how I know to do it. Um, a state machine is like turning one object into several objects because you can make it so that it doesn't access specific code unless certain conditions are true. So that one object can act as if it's many different objects with uh, different code inside of each of the individual objects. So here's what we're going to do. First thing, we're going to open up our board script uh, and we're going to take a look up here towards the top of it. So, um, towards the top of our board script, I'm going to add a, it kind of functions as a class, I'm going to do public enum, and I'm going to call this game state. Uh, and this enum here is going to have certain different uh, states that it can be in. So the states that I want to use are wait and move. Uh, okay, now, now that I've created this enum, I want to set uh, a variable to be inside the board that is going to monitor that game state. So I'm going to say public game state, and I'm going to call this current state. Um, and by default, I'm going to set this equal to move, meaning that, or equal to game state dot move. Uh, this means that when the game boots up, it's going to automatically go into uh, the move game state. So I'm going to save my script. I'm going to pop back into Unity and take a look at how this changes a few things. So if I look at my board object over here, as soon as it's done compiling, uh, if you can see right now I've got this current state added, and I have a dropdown next to it for move and wait. Um, that's just kind of an illustration of how this is going to work. So if it's in move, I want to do specific things, and if it's in wait, I want to do other things. So I'm going to pop back into Visual Studio here, and next I want to take a look at the uh, fill board coroutine. So when we're done filling the board, which is down here somewhere, um, refill board, fill board coroutine, cool. So right now, um, what's happening is we're refilling the board, we're waiting half a second, and then we're checking to see if there are matches on the board. Then we're going to wait half a second and destroy those matches. What I want to do after all of this is I want to build in another slight pause. So I'm going to do yield, return, new, wait for seconds. And I'm going to make this pause half a second again, 0.5f. And then after that pause, I want to set the state to be able to move again. So I'm going to say current state is equal to game state dot move. Um, now so far, I'm just setting the state to move, and then I'm resetting it to move after we refill the board. There's no changes here. Um, now what I want to do is take a look at the dot class, and here's where we're going to be setting the state to wait. Uh, after we start making some movements. So in the dot class, uh, I'm going to take a look at uh, checking to see if the state is move before I allow the dot to be controlled. So in the mouse down or mouse button down method, which is where I start controlling the mouse, I'm going to add a conditional statement here. I'm going to say if board dot uh, current state is equal to game state dot move then I'm going to allow the user to control stuff. Uh, okay, there we go. So I'm only 
recording the first touch position if the game is in um, if the game is in the move state. Then what I want to do is after the player releases the button, so uh, I've got my on mouse up. I want to uh, set for or set the state to wait. So in here, I'm going to do actually. I'm not going to do it in there, I'm going to do it in here after we've checked to make sure that we're greater than the swipe resist. So I'm going to say board dot, I cannot spell that name, that word correctly today, board dot current state is equal to game state dot wait. Yeah. Uh, so that means that we're going to be changing our game state to wait as soon as we uh, calculate the angle. I should probably encapsulate this on mouse up inside if board dot good lord current state is equal to game state dot move again uh, otherwise it's just going to record that uh, first position as I don't know like zero zero or something um, uh, okay cool so we've got game state dot wait now what I want to do is after I check for a match uh, I want to set the game state to wait. Uh, and then, do, 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 do. oh, no, sorry. I essentially just did that. Uh, otherwise, I want the game state to be put to move. So uh, if they didn't do the swipe resist, I want to say else board.current state is equal to game state.move. And then I also want to set it to move if we switch the pieces back. So in my check move coroutine, uh, I've got my else board destroy matches. I'm going to do, uh, let's say, uh, yield return new wait for seconds. And I'll wait for half a second. And then I'll do board dot current state is equal to game state dot move. Um, oh, I mean for this to be in the method above it. I'm making all kinds of mistakes today. Sorry about this. I meant for that to be in the if statement here. All right, so I'm going to save my code, and I'm going to pop back into Unity. And let's take a look. So as soon as it's done compiling here, we're going to test this out. So kind of pay attention to the, um, the current state over there. So pieces are going to fall in. I'm going to swap two pieces to make a match. And it's in the wait state until after half a second after it does that. So swap two pieces. It's in the wait state. And now I can swap pieces again. That half a second is probably too long. I should probably make it a little shorter. But uh, this allows us to have a situation where we are... Uh, at least having a little bit of a pause before they can make a match. So if they check, they can't immediately jump to doing those right away. They can do them later, but not right away. So that just kind of helps make our game a little more fair, and it also fixes an issue that might have come up down the road. So there we go. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the description down below. Um, you can sign up for my Twitter if you want to get uh, news about when new videos are added. Uh, other than that, next time we're going to be taking a look at um, another way that we can find those matches. So uh, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.